Welcome to the last tutorial in my beginner series. After this, I will only be making tutorials based on emails I receive of what people need help with. This is also the first tutorial I have started with the project browser. The reason I have done this is because the clip we will be using for our muzzle flash today is longer than the usual 10 seconds, and you can always just say duration, set it to 12 seconds in this case, but there's another one that's a little more specific. You can select Create Project from File. I have a folder here of every file that is available for your use. And I just select the file in my folder and it immediately brings it up. Now, I have not been able to figure out why or how, but the very first frame is an image of a different tutorial I did. So we just want to take the very first frame off of the clip. I have not determined what caused this bug, and I am pretty sure it would take a while to do so. So I found something that is extremely easy to determine when to put the muzzle flash, but there are a number of things you must do to complete it. So first, let's just skim through this. See, I cock it, pull the trigger, Cock it again, pull the trigger, and I do this six times. So you can just play that, and you'll hear the sound, which is going to be a key factor in determining where to put the muzzle flash. So we might as well figure out where the first muzzle flash is. And it is right around frame 36. You can see how I pull the trigger. It's when I stop pulling the trigger that you should put your muzzle flash, which in this case is frame 40. I believe my muzzle flash image is under mount events. So where is it? Uh, it should be in original media. And let's see. Ah, bingo. So you can see how I have this little image of a muzzle flash. You're going to want to drag that on to frame 40. Go ahead, two frames I think it should be. And you can use a key command O on your keyboard to set the out point. Now it's a little small. In fact, I think the out point should be frame 41. So it's just there very briefly. So we're because this is a pretty big gun, we're going to size this up considerably. And we also want to rotate it. By the way, this image will also be available through email. So we rotate our muzzle flash. Now, I'm pretty sure there are two different ways you can do this. One of them I'm sure works, and the other I'm not positive of. I am pretty sure that there is a, what is it, screen? I think it's called screen here, wherever that is. Boom. This one always works the best. So under properties, go to blend mode and select screen in the drop down menu. You can see how that's a pretty realistic effect. The other one that I've known to work is Keir, however, it doesn't work quite as well. You always get this weird gray outline around the image. So if you just flip through that a little bit. You can see we have our muzzle flash. It goes out within two frames. In fact, I chose a particular gun where if you look just above where it says deploy CS6, go frame by frame and you can actually see the spring move between those two frames and that's how you can determine that you have your muzzle flash right on. So you basically have to go through on each one of these and do that but I'm only going to show you one muzzle flash and I'll show you how to do each and every step in it. I have yet another file that will also be available through email and I actually created this one myself as a very specific particle emitter and I believe it's under this. Go to a folder that I conveniently titled Motion Resources. And I have a odd name for it called Muzzle Puff. I don't know where I came up with that, but 
it works pretty well because then you just slide that into place, line it up with your muzzle flash, and you can basically just go frame by frame on this. And it's very faint. In fact, we need to move that over a bit. But you can see those little particles and that smoke there. Because normally when you have a gun go off, there's going to be some black powder particles and a bit of smoke, but not much. So let's go frame by frame. We actually need to move our muzzle puff up a couple of frames. And if we just quickly render that, it will play a little better. Okay, let's have it render up to about frame 120. Now I have a lot of applications open right now, so rendering is going to take a while. But hopefully not too long. Alright, let's stop it there. And let's see how this turns out. Like I said, it's going to be slow, so let's try that again. Yeah, I think let's just stick to frame by frame. So, you can see how we have a nice little effect there. The muzzle flash should actually just be one frame. I have it as two currently. So, let's just fix that. Oops, wrong one. You have to have the correct one selected when you hit O, otherwise you screw a lot of stuff up. Alright, so it lasts for just a frame. And if we go by slowly on that, you can see how the muzzle puff goes up. Now, I could of course do a tutorial to repeat all six of these, but that would take a little while. So you see the basic idea here, but there's still one key factor we're forgetting, and that's on the exact frame of the flash, about this much of the gun would be illuminated by it. Well, maybe more like this much because it's broad daylight. But in order to do that, the best way I know of doing it is to duplicate the film that I have. So hit Command D creates a copy right on top. However, this one is going to be in and out on frame 40. We're also going to want to select our Bezier mask. And you want to go around the outline of the gun. Don't be too specific because we're going to feather it out anyways. But just wherever you think would be affected by the flash. Back, maybe drag these points. One nice thing about the Bezier mask is that you can change the points of your mask even after you've made it. So then with our group copy selected, we're going to go under filters. Should be color correction, levels. Go into the inspector, under filters, drag these sliders as you see fit. You can see how that made it much brighter. And as I said, we were going to feather out that mask, so let's do that now to make it a little more realistic. Actually, that made it less realistic, believe it or not. So you do have to kind of play around with your mask a little bit, because it can be somewhat finicky. I'm not even sure if that's a real word, but who cares. So just kind of play around with it. You might have to change your points. So if you don't see all these little red dots, you're going to want to click and hold on this and go to Edit Points. But I do have that, so we want to kind of make this a little closer into the gun. And I don't really think light would be affecting this area because that is a bit of a crevice, so light wouldn't be getting into it like that. So I think that's a little more realistic there for the amount of light we would be getting off this. So then let's just render the whole thing. It 
So the render is complete, so we should be able to watch it without too much problem. Let's hit play. Well, I take it back. Like I said, I have too many applications open right now, so the computer's going to be a bit slow. Nothing is worse than lag time. Okay, I guess we're stuck with frame by frame. When I finally post this on the web, I'll have the finished copy that will actually play as it should but you can kind of see how this effect will look. You know, considering that it's broad daylight, I think that's a little heavy on the light. So let's go back into our filters, and let's kind of reduce that just a bit. That looks a little more realistic. So there's a bunch of other things you can play with here. You could try colorizing this to make it a little more orange. And the finished copy I'll be posting on the web will have muzzle flash for all six of these. And so that's really all there is to cover with muzzle flashes. It's a pretty easy effect. Just getting the framing right is usually difficult. But like I said, with this particular gun I'd used, there's that spring right above the deploy CS6 that you can use. It's a little hard to see, but you can kind of see it there if you go frame by frame. Like I said at the beginning of this tutorial, that is the end of my beginner series, and from now on I will only be making tutorials for what I get emails about. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel and keep those questions coming.